slight setbacks on many fronts, there is one front that Britain has held firm since the outbreak of war, the Atlantic. It's been taken of our shipping by plane and U-boat, but the line still holds. And one vital factor in holding that line is the ML. Our purpose here is to show briefly the mass production of small warships for the Admiralty, from the drawing office to the launching, trials and active service. The scheme was fathered by Vice Admiral Osborne and consists roughly of the building of all separate parts of the patrol boat at various factories throughout the British Empire. These parts are sent to hundreds of small boat builders who assemble the boats to a perfect Admiralty specification. By this means, a perfect Navy boat building job can be carried out by small firms without complicated machine tools and largely with unskilled labour. This is not the medium for an exhaustive treatise on the technicalities of production, but this film will show briefly how these small submarine hunters and general service craft are being produced in large numbers. Figures, of course, are secret, but many new patrol boats go into service each week. Parts are delivered to boat builders as they require them. Other firms are making accessories, which are delivered through the central control when each boat yard is ready for them. The frames which have been delivered to the builder, complete and finished, are now being erected on the keel. They are made of Bakelite bonded plywood. Solid sections are placed at intervals between the frames, dividing the boat into watertight compartments. The next operation is the fixing of longitudinal strips, which are called stringers, tying the whole framework together, and on these the planking is fastened. The planks themselves are not steamed, but bent to take the shape given by the stringers, to which they are secured by copper nails. Impregnated calico is placed between two layers of planking. By now, our ML is beginning to look more like a seagoing craft, and in the meantime, other parts of the boat are being assembled elsewhere. These men are working on fuel tanks. This is done at a separate factory, and the tanks are made of copper sheet, riveted and soldered. Inside the tank are a number of baffles to stiffen the fabric and prevent the fuel from surging. Whitewash on the seams enables a leak to be spotted easily, and banging is the final test of strength. Let's go on board now and see how the deck is progressing. Bollards, winches, fair leads, ventilators and dozens of other fittings are being installed. Some yards in which these boats are built are quaint and picturesque. The last thing you would expect to find here is a modern warship but it's this method of farming out the work to hundreds of small boatyards that achieves mass production. Here are the engines, the most costly and delicate part of our boat. They are not normally sent to the boat builder until they are ready to be installed, and usually a team of skilled engineers goes with them. Furniture is made up from odd bits of waste wood used for the hull. Many of the other finished components are in store, ready to be sent out to builders when they're required. I name her ML-232. May God speed all who sail in her. This particular launching ceremony was performed by the Chief Wren Officer for Scotland. The headquarters of the organisation which is responsible for building these boats also runs a school for their crews. This is a class on the handling of engines. You see that your gearing was in neutral, quite clear, down on petrol, pump up the pressure, switch on, make the main switch, two banks, This is one of our MLs on acceptance trial. Hours of testing full power, full power astern, turning circles and so on. While experts on board are checking up. Pull ahead both. Pull ahead both, sir. Both engines full ahead, sir. Well, 
hard a starboard. Real hard a starboard, sir. Real hard a starboard, sir. is one of a flotilla out on patrol and presently sights an aeroplane. Is it friend or foe? Hack Hack gets ready. It's a jerry. They've driven him off but he comes back again at a higher level. Another Hack Hack gun lets him have it. That's one less Nazi to worry about. Look out, you boat. Another plane, no, one of ours. He's on the radio about that submarine. And the ship's company go to anti-submarine action station. The captain forms his flotilla. Flag is a signal to let go of depth charge. Number one attacks. either sunk or forced to surface. And here she comes. And that's another sub that'll be overdue at a German port, while the ML flotilla and the crews knock off for a good meal and a rest. Ah, and while that flotilla is resting, Another one is starting out for some distant rocket. Today, more than ever, the U-boat menace is growing in ferocity. But the sturdy little MLs are playing their part as nobly as the greatest capital ship in the Royal Navy. <laughs> 